Welcome to our Giro d'Italia preview show. This marks the opening grand tour of the season. Yeah, that is that this preview show marks the opening grand tour of the year. But anyway, it's the 98th edition of the Giro d'Italia and it starts in the familiar town of San Romo on Saturday the 9th of May before taking in nearly 3,500 kilometres over the following three weeks. Yeah, and over the course of that time, the riders will be heading initially south, hugging the Mediterranean coast until the southernmost point of San Giorgio del Sanio. They'll then head back up the Adriatic coast, traverse the famous Dolomite Mountains, before ultimately finishing in Milan. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Hmm. On paper, the completely Italian route doesn't look too brutal, and of the six summit finishes, none are as hard as Italy has to offer, and some of the famous or infamous climbs in the Dolomites are missing altogether. But if you delve a little bit deeper into the slightly less selective parkours, it could actually provide and tee up some pretty aggressive racing. Yep, so here are the key stages to mark down in your diary, starting with the very first one. Once again, a Giro kicks off with a team time trial. It's only 17.6 kilometres, so the gaps are likely to be small, but no doubt some of the GC favourites will already be starting stage two on the back foot. Orica Greenedge will be hoping to replicate their win in that stage from last year, which of course set them up for an absolutely fantastic first week. Yeah, now we only have to wait until stage five for the first summit finish, which is at Abitoni. Now the Giro last went up here back in 2000. That stage was won by Francesco Casagrande and Matt finished 85th, one minute ahead of Mario Cipollini, having attacked the laughing group. Stage 14, again, is another one to look out for. An uncomfortably long, I think you might say, time trial of 59.4 kilometres in length. That is really going to be a huge fight amongst the GC riders. And if you're going to pick out your favourites, you really need to factor that one in. And interestingly, this is actually the longest Giro time trial since 2009, when there's a 64 kilometre time trial, where Daniel Lloyd finished 120th, just 10 minutes 43 back. It was good that they found you some clip-on aero bars that day, wasn't it? Yeah. And amazingly, you did beat Jens Voigt, so uh, possibly Dan Lloyd after the hour record. I beat so. Vauclair as well, and he was pulling all sorts of faces in that time trial. How do you know? TV. <laughs> <laughs> Stage 15, just after, finishes at the summit of the Madonna de Campiglio. The previous winners there include Roberto Harris and Marco Pantani. So, a slightly dubious history there. Yeah, it's, it's actually the place where Marco Pantani got thrown off the race while wearing the pink jersey back in 1999. Yeah, the Queen stage, though, comes on the penultimate day of the race, stage 20. It takes in the mammoth Colo della Finestra, which most of you will know better as that mahusive mountain that goes up a gravel road. Later, it finishes up Sestriere, so if there's anything still to play for in the GC battle, that is where it will all be decided. The question is, though, who is this route actually really going to suit? When it comes to the GC battle, though, there's one man that stands head and shoulders above the rest at the moment, and that's Tinkoff Saxo's Alberto Contador. Now this year, of course, he's going for the Giro Tour double, and if there's one man that's going to do it, it's going to be him, given, of course, his experience and pedigree in Grand Tours. He has won every single one of them. Yeah, I think, though, if we look at the form books just from this year, you've got to say that Richie Port stands a really good chance of overall success. He comes to the race with a very strong Team Sky, and although in Grand Tours gone by, he's always had one bad day, we've seen him drop out of the classification. This year, one of his strengths has actually been his consistency. He's won multiple stage races already running into the race, and he's also been stood on top of the world rankings. Well, that was until Valverde took over. Yeah, let's not forget Rigoberto Aran, though, from Ethics Quickstep. He's finished on the podium in both of the last two years. And then, of course, Italy will be pinning its hopes as a nation on Fabio Aru, the young rider from Astana who uh, sensationally broke through last year. Although there is a question mark over his head. Uh, he's suffered from dysentery in recent weeks, losing five kilos, which he couldn't really do, seeing as he's only 63 kilos at the best of time. Apparently. So those are the main favourites, I guess, but you can't count out perhaps the likes of Domenico Pozzavivo, the AG2R yeah. rider. He's always knocking on the door at the Giro d'Italia, his home race. His rider Hestudel, let's not forget. Mm. Uh, Canon Del Garmin, he uh, won the race in 2012, and that is always there or thereabouts. I think, and it also it's worth mentioning the recent young Russian winner of the Tour of Romani, mm. a bit of a surprise winner, but uh, Ilna Zakharin from Katusha, only like 23 years of age. I think it could be an outside bet for a top 10. Yeah, especially with that time trial that he's got, definitely. Now, a quick look at the profiles reveals that there's around about six stages which looks set to be a nailed on bunch sprint finish. And to us, there's one man who stands above all the rest when it comes to the fast finishes, and that is Andre Greipel of Lotto Sudal. Now, he's going to face competition from the likes of Paluki of Yam Cycling, Marina Hoffland of Lotto Jumbo, Giacomo Nizzola of Trek Factory Racing, plus a slightly more versatile duo of Michael Matthews and JJ Labata, who will no doubt also be looking at the points competition. Yeah, and there's a couple of pretty high profile riders making their debut 
in the Italian tour. Notably, Tom Bonin of Etix, of course, missed the classics through, through crashing and injury. And then uh, Sylvain Chavanel, amazingly, uh, although he's in the autumn of his, his career, has uh, never ridden the Giro before. And they'll be definitely hunting the stage wins. Absolutely. I think we also have to mention two riders that are really going to be looking to get results. And that's Simon Gomes and Philippe Gilbert. Both, for whatever reason, have had terrible starts to this season. So they're going to be looking out for stage wins. Yeah, and one more sprinter who I left out of my initial list, Luka Mezic, who won the very final stage of last year's race in very fine style, and who comes with a great lead out train at Giant Alpacin. Yeah. Luca Paolini. Oh, him Luca as well. El, El Gervi, yeah, took it. he's already uh, won a stage a couple of years back, led the race for a couple of days, and what a season he's had, clearly in good form. I thought that was, the, beard. that was the bit where you wanted to get bearded in, wasn't it? The beard, I've done it now, haven't I? Is that actually a beard for Luca Paolini? It looks quite similar, actually. What, Slightly Wiggins, Paolini? Yeah. Well, Wiggins is, Wiggins is quit now, hasn't he? So that's got a move the, from one to another. It's the beard now, isn't I think it? I look more like Wigger than Paolini. You have to get a, looks more like when him. you're over there, just get a selfie with you and Luca. For the fans. Right, it's time for our famous, infamous, predictions. Well, my prediction, guys, is Alberto Contador. He's in, uh, he's in pretty good form. He's been uh, off the radar a little bit recently, training in um, Tenerife. And I believe that he's done, in the last three weeks, a block of training that's actually, in terms of elevation game, more than the Giro d'Italia. And he's pretty happy with the team that's built around him. For me, he's gonna win it. But yeah, yeah. it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough. Uh, my prediction is that Oracle will repeat their stage one victory. They'll let Durbo, Luke Durbridge, go across the line first, and he'll hold on to the jersey until stage three, when Matthews will take it over, and he'll have it until stage six. Who's your overall? That's there, a rubbish prediction. That's the worst prediction I've ever heard. What a GC prediction I'm from going to predict stage one. What about the rest of the I'll twenty predict stages? Up to the first week. Nah, go on, GC. I agree with Matt. Alberta Constable will win. Uh, I'm going to say Richie Port, although perhaps he's not a strong contender as Contador, he is pretty solid and his time surely has to come soon. And he's got a great team around him, he's got Leopold Koenig and Mikel Nieve as well, so solid squad. And he's a mega time trial, isn't he? I think he's got the edge over Contador on the time trial. And he's lighter than ever. Is he? Mm. And he also beat Dan's record at the Col de la Madone, so... He must be good then, must he? has got the legs. Well, actually I'm going to change my mind. Richie Port. I feel like we're missing a prediction. Huh. Well, what I think is really interesting about this year's Giro d'Italia is that there's one clear favorite, and that's Alberto Contador. He's the only rider of the main favorites to have won a Grand Tour, and he's won all three. Uh, you look at the rest of the, the main contenders, Rigoberto Iran, Richie Porte, and uh, Fabio Aru, and they're all really sort of four-star favorites. Contador is the five-star favorite. Mm, interesting. My words. Well... That pretty much wraps up our preview show. We are, of course, going to be out at the Giro d'Italia where we'll be shooting content left, right and centre and bringing back videos every day. So make sure you stay tuned to GCN for that. Yeah, but there's another big tour going on at the same time. Tour of California for our Tour of California preview. Click up here. It's a playlist, not a preview. Yeah, it's a playlist. It's, over it's, there, a playlist. It? it's that way. Yes, yeah, that way. Uh, and also, <laughs> if you haven't already caught that with this week's GCN show, you can find that by clicking down there. Featuring us in different coloured t-shirts. But in a very similar setting. Mm. Just over there, in fact. Hey, guys. Hey. Is it all in the middle? That looks funny, doesn't it? Your hair looks funny over there. It's like a Sorry? skinny Luca Paolini. What's that? Mm. Your hair looks funny in that one. You look mm. looks better than <coughs> I've it's spent a bit of time light. quaffing it since then. Don't look so hot over there. Who? You. Oh, it's and cooler. It's layered up. A black t-shirt. Jumper. It's drizzling as well out there now. Do you think anyone's still hanging around to subscribe to the channel or not? No. Oh yeah, to subscribe to GCN. Click on any one of us, if you're still here. And if you're not... Click on pink. Oh, no, or blue. You can probably like the video if they're still, still here now. Still here. Like the video. I bet it's like waiting for the end of like a Marvel film, isn't it? So there's going to be like a, a sort of an exciting Easter egg at the end, but there isn't. It's just us sat here waffling on. <laughs>